continue on radio intereconomy foreign exchange market and in connection with London right now we have Gonzalo Kenyit. How are you Gonzalo? How are you Alba? Very good afternoon. Very good evening already but yes we want to start by well, it's addressing about time. the topic touching a little bit on the euro and Germany because throughout the whole program we have been a little bit touching on what was the key news at the end of last week that the UK went into recession and Japan has gone into recession they get compared a lot to Germany Germany has moved up to that third spot of the world's largest economy at 4.4 trillion dollars valued at 4.4 trillion dollars however we have had some report already this week from the Bundesbank for example in which they also suggest or hint that it is possible that Germany is also going to go into a recession. We have very mixed data with Germany. The euro is very crazy. The euro is wanting to go back to 109 again with no fundamentals at all, neither to be back at these levels. And well, we are going to talk a little bit about that swing zone again for operations. But first of all, we are going to start with with what is going on with Germany, so much mixed data, so much contradictory information here and there, and we need to see in detail. Yes, well, that's just what you said. The Bundesbank comes out with a report saying that Germany could be on the verge of a recession, which is funny, or basically it seems almost like a joke, right? Because it looks like it is starting to be on the verge of a recession. According to the Deutsche Bank report, it is curious, especially if we take into account Look, I am reading data on the screen, right? We have the latest year-on-year -year growth rate for Germany is minus 0.3% Q4 of 2023, but the previous one was 0%, and the previous one was 0%, and the previous one, the QI of 2023, was 0.1 growth, but 2022, they closed it with a decrease of minus 0.4. Oh, and to say that it seems that Germany could be in recession seems to me to be very optimistic. And that, again, what I am telling you makes it clear that they are former geniuses. The funny thing about all this is that the Bundesbank is admitting the obvious, which is why we posted about it earlier this week, that Germany was more likely to be in recession right now because of its low foreign demand, consumer caution, and high lending rates that are impeding domestic investment. This is the Bundesbank's explanation of why Germany would be in recession. Not a single word about the main problem, the core of this problem of Germany, which is the energy resources of the country, which are basically destroyed, and no mention has to be made of this. No mention is made. Germany has said absolutely nothing about it, despite the fact that countries, authorities, well-known journalists are already joining in, pointing out that those energy infrastructures that were destroyed by the United States, according to what they say. But Germany so far has not raised its head to ask for extra explanations for this. So it is quite sad. The incredible thing, moreover, is that, and we also published it at the beginning of the week, that the response given by the German government to this Bundesbank report saying that they could be close to a recession that they could, right? The one that could. Do they think they are in a recession right now because of the downturn? Okay, well, the government has said that, well, first of all, they have questioned these Bundesbank forecasts, and quote you, they have said that the situation is simply a perfect storm of high oil prices, weak Chinese demand, and rapid inflation momentarily halting growth without calling into question the fundamentals of the government's economic strategy. In other words, this is a fluke, just an accident. The government strategy of the Social Democrats with the Greens in Germany is working perfectly, even though we have slows of German multinationals saying that it is a catastrophe. What is happening, even though we have announcements of big German companies announcing that they are moving out of Germany because of the internal issues, but it doesn't seem to be important for the authorities or media they keep ignoring the situation and the German market keep rising with no reason from a fundamental perspective. El gobierno mansion qua esto no ease un problema. Because of the internal issues, but hey no, this is a confluence of circumstances that accidentally got us here, but it's not the fault of the government's economic strategy. And of course, it doesn't agree with the Bundesbank that the Bundesbank thinks it may be going into recession in Germany. Apparently, they haven't looked at the data for a second, which is published everywhere where you see that since the year end of the year end of the year, Germany presents completely dire data for its economy. So Very that's where distorted. we are. So that's how we are. And also that they are at all the oil prices. Well, it's just that much higher. Yes. Than get, yes. As we have discussed, not only with you, but with other experts, oil is in a very supportive zone and it could get worse for the Germans. What do we do with the euro? Because the euro is also 
also taking advantage of this adjustment that the dollar index has had since we commented on that break. It practically reached its objectives at 10480, 105, and that is an area, it was an area of rotation and rest for the dollar index, which is resting. It is in that zone of 103 and 80, 103 and 40. The key is that it does not lose that zone and that it rests. That is what we are looking for, right, Gonzalo? Yes, yes. We even published in social networks a chart at the beginning of this week that showed the dollar index. I think it was on Tuesday when we published it. It showed the dollar with what it could start to be, just as we were right with the bullish pattern that was outlined in December, and that was aborted by the words of the Federal Reserve. We saw that second bullish pattern emerging in January, and if it launched to those 105 points, 104 and 50, the dollar index, as we predicted at the beginning of January, and that has been fulfilled a few days ago. The director of the Shanghai Stock Exchange, who is the one who occupies this position, we also recently commented at the beginning of the week. There has been a meeting between the director, well, the top management of, let's say, China's financial regulatory body with CEOs of multinationals, financial firms, and others to try to establish an appropriate context, an appropriate framework for the development of the financial market in China. And with respect to the yuan, as you said, we have seen that the yuan has been weakening little by little with this dollar that is substantially strong lately. Well, the yuan has been weakening little by little, and frankly, I believe that we are on the verge of it returning to zones of 7, 735 approximately, which is just the maximums it set in 2022 at the end of 2022. And at the end of 2023, with these attempts to have or to attract capital back to China to reactivate, so to speak. The investment credit attracting capital with a dollar that is getting stronger and stronger, so they are trying to keep it there, and with the premise that monetary policy cannot go very far with the People's Bank of China if the yuan breaks against the dollar, so they are left with a slightly delicate situation maintaining monetary equilibrium with the exchange rate and with investment flows. Yes, 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 they are at a crossroads, and we will continue to discuss it in future programs with you. You always bring us clues and data that we did not know about, such as the director and the sudden changes in that direction. Well, Gonzalo, can be a real pleasure, as always, to connect with you and comment on all the news. The pleasure is mine, thanks to you. Best regards.